that. Hopefully, without any technical glitches, this will be a first, and I can tell you why we're not having any technical glitches. But first, welcome to the BB Live Show. The show is nothing uh, but a toddler beating on a drum. It is the only show broadcast at 11 frames per second from my spare studio over here. Today we are joined by Totally Rad Shows, Mr. Jeff Kanata. How you doing, Jeffrey? I am doing great. How you doing? Do, do you like Jeffrey? Or do you like... Jeffrey's great. Jeffles? Jeffles. I like Jeffles. <laughs> Perfectly Jeffulent. And uh, despite all of my getting readies, I forgot to set up the split view. There we go. We'll do that right there. Uh, by the way, uh, Jeff is joining us by Skyping in a BB Live show. However, if you want to join the show, we suggest you do something a little bit different. We have uh, phone number 866-462-4424. Today, it's going to be a short and sweet episode because Jeff has bigger and bo better, more important places to go. What do you got going on? Oh, no. It's not bigger and better. I would love to be here, but um, I agreed to go to a screening tonight of Notorious, actually, the old Alfred Hitchcock film. Uh, um, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's a screening of the original or is it a remake of it? No, it's a it's a screening of the original. They're doing they do these the arc light here in Hollywood, uh, or not here in Hollywood. I'll be driving to Hollywood, but um, in Hollywood does uh, these movie nights where they have these old movies screening. And we bought tickets, and uh, Dan and a bunch of friends and I are going to be there. And are you guys going to review it for a totally rad show? We might we sing it on the show, but uh, you know we're not really reviewing it. Look at that! That took about three seconds. Somebody's already three. interrupting us. Hold on one second. Hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. Going once. Going twice. And now, oh wait, there he is. Hello. Uh, too late. Somebody was masturbating. It sounded like. Uh, so I'm sorry. So uh, you guys are going just for the grins of it? Yeah, yeah. We bought tickets a while back, and uh, you know, seeing one of those old classics on the big screen should be fun. Which is, by the way, that's one of the things that uh, I don't know. I really love about everyone in the the new media doing it nobody's doing it because they have to you know it's like you, yeah. you, you know it's like i ask oh you're gonna do it to review it for the show you're like i don't know maybe maybe not maybe we're just <laughs> doing it because we love it yeah it's absolutely true and i have to say right at the top man congratulations on your 50th episode of scam School. oh man it's I, you know i was i was so proud of myself strutting around cock of the walk and then i went and i did an appearance on dad labs you've ever seen this it's a bunch of uh, it's like uh -huh. home improvement for for dads if you remember you know yeah but uh anyway <laughs> and and they're like, yeah, well, we do four weeks, so we're up to 367. <laughs> and I was That's just not like, hell, oh, damn. <laughs> four weeks. You can't compete with daily shows. I know, I know. But still, you guys are, uh, you guys, hey, you already hit your 100. What was that like? Was that kind of a uh, world changing surreal, experience? Man. Yeah, it was odd. You know, we, when, you, when we upload the shows to uh, Revision 3, we always started by numbering the show 001, you know, 002, 003. Now, was there some part of your brain that... would ever need those digits, you uh, know? Yeah, I, I mean, there, there had to be some part of your, your brain that, that thought it was, uh, uh, I don't know, just a conceit or something to, uh, you know, yeah. like a joke for yourself or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we always were wondering, hey, man, we even need those extra two digits. But then all of a sudden we used them, so... And it's flown by, I'm sure you agree with your 50th episode. Like, how did this even happen? I don't... That is, uh, and that is that is absolutely true. You know what? I should probably mute this. Hold on. Let me see if maybe this is a real call. Hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. Uh, hi. Hi. Do you have a question for Jeff Kanata? Uh, yes. I was wondering how you did the trick that's on YouTube where you spin around a disc and then you smack the styrofoam cups. <laughs> yes. And if all goes well. And One then of slap. my favorite Brian Brushwood videos ever. <laughs> I love that. Man, that's so great. I cannot believe that stupid video has has done so well. By the way, do we have mods uh, in there? Uh, there's some people that are uh, requesting to be uh, kicked in the uh, the chat room. That's I'm talking about the chat room for those of you guys who a lot of people actually seem to watch the show recorded, which is weird for me. Okay, so good they fixed they fixed that guy. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say how it was done except for that uh, it was not what it appeared to be. How about that? Does that do it for you? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Good All right, cool. Uh, sorry to drop you off there. It sounded like you had something more to say. Uh, but uh, uh, let me do this. I'm actually going to mute this, and I may or may not answer your call until we're actually taking calls here. Holy cow, I just realized uh, Stephen Day Philippus, you know him, right? Stephen Day Philippus, or maybe I'm thinking of a different guy. I'm probably thinking of a different guy. Uh, by the way, Stephen, if you want to actually get on the air, uh, we're, we're blocking off the Skype channel uh, com coming in. Sorry. So you guys, uh, and, and by the way, I don't know anything. Tell me about the drama 
of of finding the new Steve. And I noticed that you guys kept calling him the new the new Steve, which has to make yeah. somebody feel small. Oh, you're the new well, Larry, are you? Well, we 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 were calling him the new Steve, and now we're calling Steve the old Mike. The old so, Mike. Our new guy's name is Mike. Okay, and and how how uh, how's it worked out so far? Well, he, you know, he hasn't officially taken over yet. Steve is is uh, finishing out our first two years, so his last official episode will be 104. But he's been hanging out with us and watching what Steve does and learning the ropes, and it's been great. He's a he, he's an awesome guy. And, and how was how was it uh, uh, how was it actually um, like like what is it that Steve had going on? I, I I'm sure you guys addressed it on the show, but I didn't I I didn't catch that episode. Yeah. I, He's, uh, Steve's been working a day job in addition to doing TRS since we started, and that's a pretty rough thing because TRS takes up his entire weekend, and he also works Monday through Friday. The production value and on TRS is phenomenal, and, and it's, what, it's what set you guys apart from the rest of the crowd early on. I know that's, that's literally, it was two things. It was a production value, and more importantly, it was that damn infectious theme song that, that made me a, a, <laughs> TRS, uh, a TRS guy. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the production value is all Steve, and we have we have to thank him for two hard years of of really being committed to the show. But um, his day job offered him a more lucrative position, and he'll be actually being a community manager for 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 the place he works, and actually get to do podcasty stuff there. So oh, good. So so it's going to uh, be in a related field, and yeah, it's a, it's a it's a real step up for him, and and we can only wish him the best of luck. It's a sad thing to see him go but i think he'll be uh he'll be happy where he's gone so well that's awesome all right yeah. so let's let's talk about uh uh the whole reason that we are actually that i drew you in there there are actually two reasons and one of them completely totally failed on me uh the whole i was thinking hey we'll just do a, a short and sweet episode here because i wanted to try the new flash media encoder which just makes everything look pretty and delicious and sweet uh, and in fact, last night I tried it, and we we did some stuff goofing around just for like five people on the UStream. But uh, uh, basically, if you're watching the UStream right now, everything's super pixelated. Somebody referred to me as 8-bit Nintendo Brian over here. <laughs> but it turned out that uh, uh, it turned out that uh, today I booted up uh, the computer, and the first thing it says is there is an update available for the Flash Media Encoder. <laughs> Would you like to update? And so I'm thinking, aha, I'm on to you, Flash Media Encoder. No, sir, because you will break. And so I said no. And then when I tried to run it, it's like, uh, there's something wrong with the server you're trying to connect to. Perhaps it's running a different version. And I was like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. And so it, it just didn't end up happening. So, uh, so that one's out. But the other one is completely still completely on. And that is to talk about South by Southwest now. You guys are doing a full-on, the entire show is going to be live, Totally Rad Show Live, right? Yes. I know you guys yeah, have done meetups before. Is this the first Totally Rad Show completely live experience? No, this will be our third. We oh. did a live show last year at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Okay. And we, just, we did a uh, smaller venue live show um, when we had our uh, year wrap-up show this last uh, January. Okay. At, and. At, and that was all and down in, in, in L.A., right? Yes, yeah, okay. Burbank. And so okay. what is the biggest difference doing the live stuff? Now, you know, this being your third, is this sort of ho-hum, I guess it's just another gig now, or are you still totally no, it's pumped? A, it's always abject panic <laughs> when, we, <laughs> when we decide to do live shows. It's, um, uh, we don't know how the hell we're going to throw, throw it together, what we'll do. Um, it's exciting. It's great, and I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it's going to be really awesome. But, you know, you go to these... Uh, you have, I'm sure, a ton of experience with this kind of thing, but uh, you know, you go to these venues and you have no idea what is going to be available to you, what it's going to look like, where the people are going to stand or sit or what. Uh, people, so we're uh, well, play by ear. Pe people always ask me uh, if I get nervous before gigs, and uh, uh, it's sort of a yes/no kind of qu uh, answer because uh, the the answer is no as long as everything's under control. If if I show up. Yep. And and they've they've got you know all the microphones and everything seems to work and people clearly know what they're doing and everything's laid out and it's just a matter of I don't have to worry about any of the tech stuff it's just I got to do my monkey dance on stage then totally not worried at all but but as you know it's that great unknown it's that insane uh, yeah I, mean, I don't even know how to describe it but but it's I like, was gonna say how often does that happen well, exactly. where you show up and everything works everything works well, as planned and the, and the killer thing about South by Southwest is on top of all that. You uh, you know I should probably get rid of the uh, phone number since everyone's trying to call in and we're not quite ready for calls yet. Um, uh, it's especially South by Southwest where you inject 
copious amounts of alcohol, distractions, and, and a million things going on. I'm really jealous. I, I said jealous. Uh, I'm really jealous <laughs> of you guys getting to, because you're the only event that day. You've got a sponsor. He's setting up the, the venue for you guys. So you've yeah. got somebody directly answering to you. I'm, I'm sort of tagging on the scam school thing. I'm tagging on with the Dignation Live, which means that they've yeah. got a lot of different people pulling them every direction. Well, I, I I'm excited to see that. We'll be there uh, early enough to to check out your show and check out. Check are you, are you going to be there? Are you going to be there early for the Dignation Live? Yeah. Oh, that would be fantastic. I'm so and excited. You, yeah. I am so jealous of you guys because uh, I've wanted. You know, I've lived in Austin for for 15 years now. I've always wanted to do South by Southwest. I've never done it, and this year I finally get to do it. And I and, and I get because I'm presenting, I get a gold badge and all this fancy stuff. And oh, I am loaded down with so much stuff. I'm going to be working nonstop the entire time. I'm going to have to stay sober nonstop the entire time. I'm going to be working. Everyone else is going to be drinking and have a great time. I'm very upset about that. Well, I don't know if we should uh, tease anything with, between us, but I would love to get you involved in TRS show somehow. Oh, can we tweet? You know, I'm, I, there's, there's been a little bit, uh, a bit of a courtship dance going on there. <laughs> Which, uh, yes. which uh, all right, hold on. You know what? I think, I, do you mind taking this call? Somebody's calling in. Sure, no, go ahead. All right, hold on. Hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. Uh, hello. I was wondering how long it takes you to spike your hair. Ah, yes, completely on topic. Very good, sir. Uh, that's <laughs> The answer is eight minutes, and in fact, there's a video of it. If you go to YouTube and, uh, and type uh, Brian Brush with a hair, you'll find it. All right. All right, cool. Take, take care, man. Thank you. That's, uh, this <laughs> does anyone have a question for the, for the guest? Oh, Mr. That's... Jeff Canada. That's awesome, dude. I, I'm sure you've never answered that question about the hair either. <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice. Uh, we've got <laughs> Stephen DeFilippis keeps calling on the Skype channel. and he, uh, Stephen, we're not able to answer you because we would be canceling off. Uh, we'd be getting rid of uh, Jeff in order to do that. Oh, yeah, somebody in the chat room wants to know more importantly, Jeff, how long does it take for you to do your hair? Yeah, I'm, I'm much, much longer than I am, I'm sure. What I, I love, yeah. what I love is is some of the code that's happening in the in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> Murphy, what do you saying? Jeff, smile if you liked Watchmen, which is something I'm going to start grilling you on here in a second. Hold on. But first, uh, hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? I actually have a question for Jeff. Oh, fantastic! We actually have a question for Jeff. What's going on, bud? By the way, who is hey, this? I was I was uh, wondering. I'm a, I'm a big fan of TRS, a big fan of Project Lore, and how are you? Uh, how are you enjoying doing Project Lore, and how long do you think you're going to be continuing doing Project Lore? Very good question. Project Lore, for people who don't know, is uh, a show, another show I do with Alex Albrecht. I didn't know. I didn't know you did Warcraft Project Lore. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to inter interrupt you. Although I clearly no. just did. Uh, I, I I didn't know that that I've only seen a bit of part Project Lore. I didn't know that you were involved with that. Yeah, I just I just uh, subbed in one of the original guys uh, was a good friend of mine has left to do other things and so uh, Alex asked me if I'd step in and and so I'm I'm gonna be doing the show for as long as uh, as long as it works out in my schedule and as long as the show keeps going so and are you are you future are you a hardcore MMO kind of guy or or uh, I'm pretty hardcore yeah and and actually I had been off of WoW a little bit I I you've been off the junk that. I removed that uh, heroin needle from the arm, but um, doing the show now, I'm I'm so sucked back in. It's really fun, but um, when I first uh, got on the show, we were doing. I was playing a character that I hadn't I hadn't played before. Uh, we respect my character, and um, I'm embarrassed at some of the the performance that uh, my character put through on those first few episodes. So if you oh, watch so the you show and like you watch me play a paladin terribly. Please stick with it because I get better. It's it's almost like a sporting event. All of a sudden, you feel the need to perform, yeah. and you're just like, you know, you're going to get cut because I'm sorry, you were too late on the spells. It's absolutely true. And the thing that's so uh, terrible is that the way Project Lore, Project Lore is a is a very um, post production heavy show. So stuff mm -hmm. is shot, and then it doesn't come out. Does not viewable on the website for I don't know 
two months. So this stuff was coming out after I'd already kind of gotten my bearings and learned how to play the Retribution, Retribution Paladin. And uh, it's, it was still coming out, and I was so embarrassed that, like, new episodes were coming out where I was still being terrible. And the people in the forums were like, this guy doesn't know anything. And I'm like, I know it now. Please stick with it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm so embarrassed. No, I, I understand completely because that's how it is with, uh, with, with Scam School. And we have difficulty because, you know, there might be different sponsors who, who want to join or they're like, hey, well, you know, uh, uh, we, you know, we might get so-and-so to join, you know. And, it, like, you don't understand. We need to know now for two months from now yeah. when the episode comes out because we can't you know, integrate stuff in because we're, we, we do it in batches. Uh, yeah, right. All right, caller, I'm going to drop you off, man. Have a good one. Thanks for the question. All right. Hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. Uh, hey, Brian. Hey, who's this? What's going on, brother? Uh, first of all, I want to say your camera uh, is fucking shit. So is your show. You're a fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. Uh, go fuck your mom. Oh, and fantastic. Fuck- That's wonderful. Welcome to Community Access Television. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do any Community Access Television, Jeff? I didn't. No. I, did you ever? I, did I you ever? Slightly n- half a step above that. <laughs> a friend of mine. <laughs> a friend of mine has a, uh, a demo reel of all the uh, t- of all the shows that he's made a habit of of derailing by calling and and punking and. Uh, uh, way more creative than that guy. I I choose to interpret that as a really lame homage to you that he was attempting to scam the scammer. I like it. Very bad at it. Yeah. I like it. All right, hold on. We got. So, is there is there somebody on the line now? Who do we got on there? Who do we have on the line right now? Hey, this is the Orange Door. The Orange Door. That's yeah, cool. that's what I go by. All right, that's cool. What's going on, Orange Door? I like it. Hey, I was wondering um, if you guys would like to discuss. Um, being a sort of web celebrity in some way, how have you um, uh, experienced and felt the uh, pressures of of having many viewers every week? That's interesting. So the que- the question was was how do you deal with the pressure of trying to of of is are, are you referring like the profession the the pressure to get a bunch of viewers or the pressure of knowing that everything you do is about to be seen by a lot of viewers? Yeah, a, a, a bit of both, and I'm maybe comparing the two of your uh, experiences and maybe seeing where they cross over or where they differ. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this much. Uh, Jeff up here, Brian, Brian down, I down here. That. I don't know about that. Um, I, I don't know your experience with it, Brian. I, 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 it's still so cool that anybody at all tunes in to watch what I have to say. <laughs> you know, I, I am blown away every episode that, that people email us and watch the show, and, and if I get stopped in the street by someone, I am so surprised and, and uh, just can't believe that, that some of the things that people say are so nice. So yeah. I, I can only say that it's been a wonderful positive experience for me so far. Well, I, I, I tell you, uh, doesn't some part of you think the way I do uh, uh, that, uh, like, you discovered some kind of back door, some sneaky, uh, like, like all of uh, media is some giant concert, and you got everybody out, uh, you know, everybody who's playing the, the regular game, they get this giant ru- uh, line wrapped around the building, and meanwhile, you figured out that if you jump on this dumpster and climb up this window here, uh, you, you scoot in the back door. D- does that make any sense? Yeah, I definitely feel like I, uh, I have half of my body still in the dumpster, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm, wor- I'm working on getting through the window. But like the, the hobo the recognize you. That's, that's what's awesome. You know, your <laughs> yeah. body's in the dumpster, but the hobo's just like, are you Jeff Kanata? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I mean, it's so awesome. And it's a, it's a dream come true, you know. Were you doing any other uh, new media stuff before Totally Rad Show, or is Totally Totally Rad Show your first dance? Uh, we were doing. Um, Steve and I were doing web short comedy web shorts um, that had a small, tiny little audience to them, but nothing on the scale of Totally Rad Show. No. Uh, well, that's cool. And how did how did you get involved with that? Because I, uh, well, I actually I don't know anything about it. How did that come together? Well, I became friends with Alex and Dan. Uh, we met playing Dungeons and Dragons, actually. Um, and they, you know, Alex had been doing Indignation, and Dan was doing Geeks, Geek Drone. And um, we, uh, through a situation with Geek Drone, he, Dan needed uh, guest hosts, and we were all kind of just buds that were hanging out, talking about geek stuff anyway, movies and video games and comics and TV. And so we guest hosted, and uh, that experience was so much fun and 
exciting that we decided, man, we, we may be able to do this as a show. And um, Dan's Geek Drome experience was ending, and so we decided to just throw it together and, and see what happened. But it was basically us all talking about this stuff anyway, and um, we thought, man, it might be fun to have other people involved in the conversation with us. Uh, and I think a lot. I think you see a lot of that in the new media stuff. Is that uh, there's so much passion yeah. in everything. I mean, I, I know uh, the the whole reason I put together Scam School was because I would hang out after after these live performances, and people would want to show me magic or ask me to show them magic and 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 stuff. And you know, so that's where most of the material got written. And and you were saying the totally rad show is stuff you'd be talking about anyway on your own. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Let's go ahead. Yeah, and, and I think you know people ask me all the time. I'm sure you get this too. Uh, how, what, what should I do? I want to make a show. I, what should I do? And I always tell people, just do the thing that you're interested in. Because if you love you know, underwater basket weaving, there's going to be people that love that, that have never seen a show about it and have always wanted to see a show about it. It's, it's, and, about, it's about splinters. It's, it's, you've got the great yeah. tree of, of media, and everything splinters off into smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, smaller, and smaller pieces. It's that long tail, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, by the way, I know I've 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 advocated this book several times. There's a book called the uh, uh, the Origin of Brands by uh, uh, by Alan Laura Reese, and they talk about branding from an evolutionary perspective, and they talk about how uh, you know the Model T did not morph and become the Ford Taurus, just like the uh, just like the uh, uh, you know, just like the monkey did not morph and become a man. Instead, you had all these branches, and and first there was the 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 Model T, and then there was uh, uh, the 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 sport truck, and the utility truck, and the family wagon, and the minivan, and all these sprint splinters. And I see that in media all the time, where where especially in new media, where all of a sudden there's no rules, no regulations. It's all complete distribution. Even even an idiot like me can, from his spare bedroom, put on some kind of live show. Uh, all of a sudden, you get really interesting co collections of of just about every niche, and some of them thrive, and others of them wither and, and die off. Yeah, and 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 I think that the the truth is the cream rises to the top, you know. And you you clearly have so much talent. I I, I freaking love this live pseudo radio show with video. It's such an awesome concept, and you know, easy. I assume. <laughs> Other than it's, <laughs> all the crashes that you've described, right. it, it um, helps. That, it helps that the bar is like right about here. That's all I'm <laughs> trying to do. Is and if nothing else, if it's just an excuse to get to hang out with uh, with with my buddies online, because we're all spread out all over the world, and uh, it's a one of my favorite moments that we were able to get out of this was uh, was when somebody called in on Skype, and it was a girl, which we didn't even know girls watched any of this stuff. Uh, but she she it was a girl from Finland who called in. To perform the human blockhead live on the air. Wow! Yeah, that's awesome. That was pretty cool. All right, let's. Uh, if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and take one more call here. Sure. Uh, I hope it's somebody. Who do we got here? Hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. Going once. Going twice. All right. You know what? We'll jump Do over to this other one. You. Hey, this is Brian. You're on the air. Oh, you know what? I muted it. There we go. Sorry. There we go. Are you there? Uh, yep. Hey, who who do we got here? Uh, Dalton. Hey, what's going on, Dalton? Um, I had a question for you, Jeff. You got it. Um, Alex albrecht has been talking a lot about secret projects going on and stuff he's been doing. I don't know if you had a pardon and if you could say any words about it. Um, well, they're called secret projects because for now they're secret. <laughs> um, we're, I, I can tell you this. Alex and Dan and I have a production company, um, and Totally Rad Show is only one show that we hope to create with our production company. So the re we, ha we created a production company because we wanted to make more than just the Totally Rad Show together. So, you know, Alex is, Alex is one of the most driven guys I know, and he's always doing stuff, and the three of us are always doing stuff together and we've been pitching stuff around town and we've got lots of ideas so hopefully you'll be seeing lots more from us in different ways in the future too. Do, do you find it hard to keep your mouth shut about stuff or do you no. find it um, uh, like uh, oh, thanks, for, thanks for the question Carl I'm going to go and drop this off. Yeah, thanks. Um, the, uh, do you find it hard to keep your mouth to keep your mouth quiet and you know stay focused and put on your business face in the middle of all the exciting stuff? Sometimes. I, you know I've, I've always subscribed to this philosophy that there is a certain amount of energy um, 
involved in making something, and you can spend that energy talking about it, or you can spend that energy doing it. Right. And if it, there's this like need in me to do certain things, and if I tell people about it, that need gets used up because I feel like, oh, people already know all about this thing. But if I have to make it for them to see it, then I use all that energy in making it, and right. then they get to see it. So. All right. Well, that's cool. I uh, I used to be very superstitious about uh, about letting uh, about mentioning anything that was in the works or whatever. But then after yeah. enough times, uh, like uh, like yeah, you get your chain yanked by by TV shows. And by the way, we got somebody waiting patiently uh, with a question on the call. Hold on, caller. Uh, but it's like you get your chain yanked by shows. You're like they might have you on to do this blah 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 or whatever. And yeah. uh, and it was like there were so many times I was like. Oh, well, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to screw it up by by talking about it. So I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, not realizing that so many times, nine times out of ten, that excitement of what almost happened is as far as it's going to go. So now yeah. it's like the moment the phone rings and it's a chain yank. I'm like, hey, that's awesome. Guess who I got my chain yanked by? That was that was my, the highlight oh. of my day. <laughs> I feel like the, the, the times that has happened and I told my parents, it's the worst. Because parents never forget that thing that you told them about two years ago that you thought might be possible to happen. Oh, uh, like, yeah. So what happened, ever happened with that thing? And, and you go, oh, you have to <laughs> hey, tell I, noticed, oh, uh, I was watching I Regis and Kelly, and I noticed that you weren't co-hosting it. <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah. What ever happened there? <laughs> All right, we got, we got a caller on the line. Hey, caller, what's up, man? Hey, Brian, this is Matt. I was wondering how much time, how much recording time uh, you're actually doing recording scam school uh, how much you actually goes in the podcast? Uh, the, you're talking about for the scam, yeah, the scam school. We we shoot a lot of video for that, and a lot of it is it's so frustrating because we do all the planning, we do all the development, we do all the get ready. Uh, we 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 find the material, we practice it, we write it. Uh, and then we go there and we find out that the venue Hello? has loud music playing and we can't do anything about it. Or we find out that the uh, that the uh, that the people the volunteers who we get are total duds and they're drunk and it doesn't work. So uh, there's there's probably I'd say about fifty percent of what we shoot out that makes it into the episode. Hold on, that's a little bit loud. Caller, turn down your radio. I've never had to say that before. Does does that answer your question? Does that answer? You? All right, I got I got to kill that. Sorry about that, dude. Hello. Uh, what? If, uh, and what is the? Yeah, case? that does. Thanks a lot. Whoa, that's weird. All right, I'm gonna unplug that. Uh, what's the case with you guys, uh, Jeff, with the Totally Rad Show? Is it, how much gets actually cut? It it looks like you you're able to successfully give the impression that very little is actually is actually cut. Yeah. Uh, we we take the philosophy at least for the discussion segments that it's live to tape. So we something drastically wrong has to happen for us to stop. Um, has has it happened that way? Yeah, a few times. A few times. <laughs> something horrible, horrible, horrible has happened. Or and usually those episodes, I don't know. People people who are regular watchers of the show will see that Steve throws up that like kitty cat that's that says just hang on, we'll be right back and. It, well, uh, my so. fa- my favorite was when uh, was when you had Mumra riding the uh, the the lawnmower back and forth throughout the entire yeah. <laughs> the entire time. Well, we that's because we literally had a uh, somebody riding a six thousand year old mummy on a uh, tractor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, what can everyone expect? First of all, how many people are you expecting slash daring to hope for at the TRS Live in South by Southwest? Well, so supposedly the venue holds like three or four hundred. So if we can pack that place, I will be the happiest guy in the world. That is and awesome. I think we can. Oh, I totally think you can. And and, and yeah, I I definitely think you can. Uh, yeah, any I'm, any any hints as to what you're covering? Well, we're gonna we're gonna be covering mostly uh, South by Southwest stuff uh, that we can get into. We don't have cool gold guy. Uh, <laughs> badges like you have. Yeah, apparently I'm going to be all alone by myself like I got gold badges who's with me and it was just like none we don't uh, go go enjoy crap by yourself Brian <laughs> with your gold badge jerk. Yeah we'll be sitting outside drinking going I hope he's having fun in there. What yeah, what are you most drink. excited to to see because you you've got yeah. everything all planned out what movies you're going to see yeah and, and how and when. 
Well, there's still, you know, from what I hear, this is my first time there. I, I've never, I've never been to South by Southwest. So, but what, from what I hear, it's not guaranteed that you get into any of the movies. It's all just sort of standing in line. So, right. We're hoping to get into Sam Raimi's new um, horror movie that's supposedly going to be showing there. Um, and there's also this movie called uh, The Worst Movie Ever Made or something like that. That's about, uh, I think it's about Troll Two. It's a documentary about it's a documentary about the worst movie. movie ever made. Yes, awesome. Uh, and there's a whole list of stuff that we're going to try to get into. So hopefully we'll be able to be talking about a lot of things. I really want to see 500 Days of Summer. I know that's playing there, but I don't know the the schedule. So so on the uh, uh, regarding the live show, people have to pay tickets. Is there an no, it's age free. It's not, it does not require. Thank you for asking that. By the yes, way, sweet. it does not require a South by Southwest badge. It's uh, we have a venue. It's called Malverde. I think it's a bar slash club, something or other. With a, a, a bar there. slash torture um, chamber. <laughs> yes. All right, hold on. Um, I'm, I'm gonna actually look it up here. Bad green, right? Mal- yeah. <laughs> Malverde means exactly. bad green, right? Uh, Which is ironic because we're performing on St. Patrick's Day. I like so. it. That's uh, that. That might be better than irony. Uh, let me see what I got here. There we go. That's what comes up when you type in Malverde. <laughs> awesome. So that's 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 you right there, buddy. Jesus Malverde. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know if uh, I guess there's a band Malverde and uh, well, the bad green's all over the place. <laughs> Can't avoid the bad green. So are you? Uh, uh, I'm I'm so, I'm so curious because there are different levels of uh, like like I've caught on that 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 you are a hundred percent you're 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 an actor for a living and and th- and that's what you do. Uh, and, and some of that involves TRS, and some of that is 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 gigs of different variety. Um, you know, and meanwhile, I guess I guess I guess technically Dan has a day job. I don't know. It feels weird to call something as awesome as what Dan does a day job. But uh, I mean, t- tell me about the the dynamic of everybody having different levels of involvement with different projects at the same time. It's uh, it can be tough because we're we're juggling a lot of things that we're all trying to make happen. Uh, Dan is a working director. He he has a production company that are that employs him and gets him jobs and he, he directs commercials and um, Alex is a working actor. He's auditioning all the time. I'm auditioning all the time. So, you know, we all hope to get involved in the making of movies, not just the commenting on them. But uh, in the meantime, you know, TRS is a is a wonderful, wonderful thing that I love doing so yeah absolutely and, and I just realized it doesn't feel like the B team at all you know it, it definitely is one of the things where I, I if lightning struck tomorrow and I was somehow you know acting was paying all the bills I would uh, and it was taking all <laughs> You'd my be time like, and, you so know, long suckers <laughs> yeah. peace out bitches I, that may happen that might happen <laughs> alright uh, uh, by uh, the way I would still love to do TRS you know? we, we've got a call who's waited 7 minutes and 30 seconds for a question hey caller what's going on man And apparently he's left his... Still waiting. Yeah. He's given up. I'm gonna, all right, I'm going to leave him on hold. I'm going to jump over the other line. Hey, you're on the air with Brian and Jeff. What's going on, man? Hello? Hello. Yes, you are on the air. What's up, bud? Uh, I, I, wanted to, I wonder what your studio looks like when you're doing it live. When I'm doing it live? Yeah, what does the whole area look like? Uh, it's, it's a little bit sad. I, I had to, it's a little bit messy right now. This is uh, this is where all the old posters go go to die. Um, that's you know, there's some stuff over there, and then there's there's this over here, and you can see this fabulous cathode ray tube. That's because I don't have a second monitor and I haven't gone out and bought one yet. But I've got an old 27 inch monitor. And over over here you can see there's there's Jeff, and then down down here are the other elements. That's the switching software. Over here is a bunch of old stuff. And then back here is uh, uh, yeah. more more stuff. So there it is. And apparently that was enough for him. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Look, we. Uh, uh, I, oh, I'm so glad. This is this is great. I was really worried that we wouldn't get it together and we wouldn't have enough time. I just realized this is. Yeah, there we go. Wait. Wait, there we go. I was so worried that we wouldn't have enough time to get everything together, uh, but I'm glad that that it's that it's working out here. Um, you still you still got like a half an hour to go, right, Jeff? I, 
I I love this, by the way. I, I we got to figure out how to do some live stuff with TRS because it's so cool to have instant feedback from people. I'm watching the chat room and going, people are just hanging out with us. We're all hanging out. Yeah, we, uh, well, and and that's uh, I tell you that's it's it's interesting because you you sort of tap into a very passionate fan base with 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 the new media. Call it, you know, movement sounds too weird. All right, hold on, we got somebody calling in. Hey, it's Brian. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, Brian. This is Matthew Vosk. I love your show. Bye. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't really hear what he said. What, what did he just say? He loved your show. Oh, good. Uh, the, the, the reason I was distracted is because you heard that ding. That was my that was uh, my brother, the Butter Brother, Parquet, uh, Jay Brushwood, calling to say that he would love to participate, but he has to watch Lost. And I just realized that we're doing this episode with half our audience tag, tied behind our back. Well, that's... That's why God invented TiVo. <laughs> and that's the same thing. It's funny because I love Lost. I'm crazy. Do you like Lost? Are you nuts about oh, the yeah. Lost? This season has been phenomenal. It, it has been good. And you know what makes me sad is is I think I may make the crazy decision to only watch shows after they've completely run their course. Like like I'm so sad that that twice I've given up on Lost and both times were times when it was waiting from week to week and the and it had been so long to remember yeah. stuff and and they're so good with their writing they're so good at remembering to tie stuff back and keep everything consistent in ways that are way over my head uh, and it makes yeah. it, it just makes me sad that I'm watching them week to week to week I I would love to be somebody to sit down and just spend a, three weeks and watch it straight through. And isn't it so great when you do discover a show that's completely available on DVD and you just watch the whole thing and, and you can sit down and watch five episodes in an evening and you go, oh my gosh, it's so awesome seeing it this way all together with no commercials. And One of the best experiences uh, I've had with television was watching... Uh, now, uh, that's right, and I talked to Dan about this because you, you are not a Buffy fan, right? No, that's a show I should go back and watch on DVD because I never, I never watched it. I well, never my brother, it. it was very weird. It was the only show that, my brother, that, that I had this happen. My brother said... Here is six seasons. The entire first season is complete shit, but you must watch it. Uh, it will be like swallowing a bitter pill every single day, and then, but you must watch it because it will be sad if you didn't watch it later. Uh, then somewhere amid, around the middle, the second season is palatable. Somewhere around the middle of the second season, you'll realize you're having a good time, and by the beginning of the third season, it will be a compulsion, and you will compulsively swallow every single episode after that. And it was exactly the way he said it. In fact, uh, man, it must have been like five years ago. The last time... In my adult life, I remember acting like a teenager and just being unable to stop myself watching. We started watching episodes at like you know eight in the evening, and it was it was nine the next morning, full on daylight, and it was like, well, I guess I should stop. But uh, but it really awesome. gets good. It really gets good. I gotta do that. I I, I gotta do that. That's you know I'll let you in on a little uh, embarrassing secret. Oh, we, confessional. We mentioned on yeah, confessional. Uh, we mentioned on TRS that we would uh, watch Babylon 5 because we'd heard so much about it. And you couldn't do it. And it was that same thing where everybody sent sent us messages like, you got to just swallow the first season, like bad medicine, it's going to be bad, you know, you know it's going to be bad, but you have to watch it. So we all watched like three episodes of the first season, and it was so, so bad that it really just destroyed our entire... You and me both. There's no shame in admitting that. I could not I could not do it. I could not make it happen. And it's sad because people have such love for it, and people kept writing in, like, when are you guys going to talk about Babylon 5? Because we announced that we were going to do it. And, man, it just... Oh, so you even committed to it. You even made a, made a pinky yeah. swear. You don't go back on that pinky was, swears. That was the last time that we, we will ever uh, tell people what we do before we do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I just realized that somebody's actually waiting patiently on the line. Who's on the line with us right now? What's up, Schwood? This is Will. Hey, what's going on, Will? What's up, buddy? Not much. I got a question for Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. A.K.A. Doom Rider. Doom Rider? I'd like oh, to know how the Sam Plenty Clavicate of Action Show. What, what is this? Yeah. Isn't uh, that the same, Jeff? That's the thing. That's a, you know, we had that question earlier about... Um, Internet celebrity, yeah. And the the one thing about internet celebrity that I've come to learn is that anything you have ever done <laughs> will be found. 
Yes. People will find it. Um, I did a thing for for Jim Henson Company. They did a, a web series show, and I, I I played like a just a, a basically an extra, a glorified extra. Um, oh, that's awesome! But I dressed in a ridiculous outfit. It's this over the top silly um, uh, kids show, basically. But it's uh, <laughs> it's like a it's a it's making fun of those old fifties uh, or twenties. Uh, I don't know uh, those old serials, you know, that they would show in front of films. That actually, this same kind of stuff that Indiana Jones was based on. But this is like the western, the singing western, you know, like uh, Roy Rogers, Holy I guess. Holy uh, Yeah, and I played on one of the evil characters, and it and it it's just it's in. Yeah, you know what I would love. Uh, it, it's it's funny because like um, uh, there are people who get really attached to particular characters and uh, like uh, the the guy who used to play uh, Mr. Belding on uh, 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 on Saved by the Bell, he's currently yeah. doing a uh, a bunch of uh, college tours, right? And he's very approachable, loves getting out, connecting with people, and talking about. It. And of course, everyone wants to talk to him about. Mr. Belding, you know, and and it's kind of funny to take this kind of character that of 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 this small, relatively small show from relatively long ago, and and to see Mr. Belding, you know, holding holding a, a Coors Light in his hand, and, and 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 he's just like, the thing about Mr. Belding is, you know, like like really <laughs> kind of getting into the mind of of this of, <laughs> of this guy. That's awesome. All right, do you have anything else, caller? No, that's pretty much it, Brian. I just wanted to let uh, Jeff rehash his Jim Henson days back from uh, yeah, you 08. Called, you called to torture yeah. him. Excellent. I did, it, I buddy. did. <laughs> All right, see ya. You uh, know, it's, it's so, I, I'll do something, and um, I won't even know how to ever find it. And then all of a sudden, it'll pop up in our forum. Somebody's like, look, I found Jeff in this thing. And I'm like, I didn't even have any video of that or... Yeah, it's, there's a there's a lot of of little appearances like that. Uh, you know what's funny is I had kind of a, th- a cathartic experience because uh, I, I mean I guess you you know what it's like when when you've got a gig and the pressure's on and it's like you got to perform and there are times that you knock it out of the park and there's times that you just wish it never ever happened. I mean I, well, I don't know maybe you haven't had that kind of epic fail before, have you? Oh, uh, definitely. I, okay. I do. You know, doing the live improv stuff. I definitely we've had the. The okay, then you know exactly what I'm talking about because what's funny is I was afraid that nobody would, would really get what I'm talking about because uh, with magic, you put it all on the line. You say, and your card is blank, and you either pull it out of your ass or you don't. Uh, and, wow. uh, and, and with improv, it's the exact same thing. It's just like, you know, you've been dealt a dentist. Uh, you know, at the workshop, you know, getting a Hummer, and then you have to make that work, <laughs> and maybe, you know, it either works or it doesn't. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, there was a radio show here locally in, in Austin, Texas, that I did uh, like two or three times when I first got started around the turn of the century. Don't you love that we get to say that, by the way? Talk about the, yeah, the, back turn, of the, of the turn of the century. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but but uh, like the third time I did it, first time was good. I was doing the, the blockhead and the nail in the eye and, and whatnot. And then uh, uh, the third time I did it, I sort of just swooped in and I wasn't really thinking I did this this thing where I was supposed to um, somebody was supposed to think of a card and I was tear, uh, out of this sheet of cards I was supposed to tear it up and it was something it was a little bit kind of loosey where I was supposed to watch his reactions and figure out his card and it got to the end and it was it was like eight minutes of build up and then it just didn't work and there was this pregnant pause and I remember one of the co-hosts going uh, A for effort though <laughs> You know, <laughs> and it was just like ah, that's, that's screw it, right? And so I thought to myself, I was like, all right, that's it. That's the last time I'll ever do this show. You know, that's uh, whatever. They'll remember. They're probably making fun of me for years to come. Hopefully, it won't come back to bite me in the ass. <clears throat> but uh, but now that Scam School's launched, uh, Revision Three does a good job of trying to promote all their shows. So the folks from Revision Three got a hold of of the show and booked me on it. Oh, now man. at this point, over the years, I've I've softened everything because I've been like, okay, you know, nobody remembers. If anyone remembers my epic fail, they don't remember that it was me. They just remember some guy on a radio show totally flubbed a card trick, whatever. The only people who really know are the guys who, you know, do this morning radio show. And so they booked me on the radio show. I'm like, okay, so we'll go and they'll make fun of me and it'll be hilarious. They'll probably have the clip of it, but now I'll be able to say, hey, I'm the host of Scam School now and it'll work out. Uh, And to my utter shock and amazement, they did not remember me at all. 
They did not. That's they said worse, right? They, no, 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 no. It's so much better. So much better. Oh, so much better. <laughs> Remembering uh, back in the day, they were like, they were, they were like, uh, they were like, oh, you're amazing. You're a fresh new talent out of nowhere. You've got heat. You're. We've never seen anything like you. <laughs> and, right. and you live right here in our backyard. What a discovery! And it, it ended up being a great appearance. But, but That's what awesome. it taught me is, first of all, nobody cares. Not even the people who are, whose job it is to care. The only person who cares if you fail is you. Does that make sense? Dude, that is such an awesome lesson. You know? That's, that's awesome. It totally, that's, it totally freed me up to where now it's yeah. like it just doesn't matter. I mean, what does any of this matter, you know? Yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, a couple of questions from uh, direct chats sent to, uh, to Skype. Uh, Amber asks, do either of you, Brian and Jeff, have plans for coming to the East Coast in the near future? Jeff? I don't, but uh, I, would, I hope it happens soon because we always have a great time when we go out to the East Coast. So, When was the last time you guys did that? Was it for the meetup? Yes, it was. I guess it was for the yeah for the Webby Awards last, last year. We went to New York and had a meetup there. You guys won a Webby Award, dude. Do you just yeah, wake up in a awesome. cold sweat in the middle of the night and be like, Webby's? I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. that's huge. That's, that's the real deal. It was really fun. It was really fun. And it, and it felt like a uh, a real award show. You know, they had red carpets and announcers and Lauren Michaels was there and Stephen Colbert was there. It was cool. Uh, oh, holy cow, Stephen Colbert. Well, and what's what's funny is like right now... Right now, we perceive it as kind of cute that the Webby Awards, you know, feels like a real uh, web, web show or uh, awards. But I mean, that's how the the Academy of, of of Film Awards started off, and that's I mean, all yeah. of them felt hilariously faux at the beginning, and then uh, eventually, you know, wow. Yeah. I, I want to hear more about your your first few times of of performing magic in front of people. I mean, that must be. I, I, I am so in awe of that kind of balls to just to like, I'm going to attempt to trick these people and I'm just starting out and I've never done this before and it must take such... Do you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to kind of blow it off like, oh, shucks. But, but I think you're actually right in, in some respects because uh, when you get started, at least now as a performer, I can take something that I've kind of toyed with and, and walk in and know that if, if it screws up, everyone will laugh and think that's part of the, the trick. And if, yeah. that, if I make it, if I knock it out of the park, everyone will clap and think I'm a hero. And, and that's pretty much it. It's kind of, I, you know, once you're into it, you have a no-fail uh, situation. But when you get started, I mean, have you ever done any magic when you were a kid? No. It's, no. It is brutal. Nobody is harder to, to perform for than your friends. It's like... Uh, they're the, uh, yeah. you know, the proverb about the crabs in the bucket. Do you know this? The crabs in the bucket. Crabs in the bucket. It. Sit on a bucket, you'll get crabs. No, uh, that's, oh. uh, no, no, that's not, I'm, I'm making that up. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the proverb goes that um, uh, uh, crab, crabsters, what do they call people who catch crabs? It's not suddenly taking a dark turn. Um, what, do be, what do they call they're, people who call crabmen? They're called uh, the most dangerous catch, I believe. Right. <laughs> so anyway, these crabsters, they, they will take a bunch of crabs and they'll just throw them in an open bucket. And any one of the crabs can crawl up and out of the bucket. And the proverb goes that some kid says, hey, don't you want to put some like a lid on top to keep those, those crabs could just crawl on out. They're like, ah, oh, don't worry, just watch what happens. And sure enough, one crab starts to kind of crawl at the side, but the moment that crab gets up, the other crabs grab it and pull it back down, right? So those are the crabs wow. in the bucket. Uh, they those say crab buddies. fishermen, <laughs> although somebody says crabby patties. <laughs> in crabby the, uh, patties. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, man, you will never see a clearer representation of that phenomenon than when you try to do magic for your friends. Because yeah. all of a sudden, you're all on the same level, you're busting each other's chops, but if one of you might be better than the others and finding the cards or making the stuff disappear or appear, and all of a sudden, you know, because if you have the secret, you have power over the other person, and people right. can be effing brutal about that. Dude, I, it's, it, I, it occurs to me that magic and um, daredevils are like the only two things where you go to them and you kind of hope they fail. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? You are 100% correct. And you know what's funny is I actually had uh, – do you want to see a magic fail video? 
Yeah. All right, hold on. I'm going to see if I can find it. I, t- I tell you what, let's do this. We're about ready to do a break. Um, you got How long do you have, Jeff? Uh, I could be here until uh, at the latest 7.15, but I've really okay. got to Okay, all right, well, let's do this. Let's let's wrap up. Uh, I think we have one more question. Uh, somebody was on the phone. Uh, caller, did you have a question? Yes, I do. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Brian. Hey, Jeff. Uh, this is Matt Baska. I was wondering what your all-time favorite trick is. I'm going to let Jeff go first because you have a different wow. perspective as me. You can taste sugar instead of being sugar. <laughs> yes. My all-time favorite trick. Like, have you ever well, seen an illusion that... to beat the nail in the eyeball. <laughs> I, when I saw you do the nail in the eyeball the first time on Scam School, yeah. the, I think it was the, live, the first live Scam School that mm-hmm. I saw, like, I think that was the first time you did it on the show. Yeah. It blew my freaking mind. And I, uh, I remember calling my girlfriend in from the other room and going, you have to watch this right now. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's awesome. Yeah. I like hearing yeah, that. I, I, uh, and I didn't. I mean, I didn't. We hadn't met. We had. I didn't. I, well, we still haven't met technically. But yeah, I, I had and no. that weirds me out because there's all these people that I feel. I mean, th- there is kind of a weird family atmosphere to everyone in Re- Revision yeah. Three. It's like I wish everybody success, and I can't wait to see them at the next family reunion, which is what South by Southwest feels to me like is a, is a family reunion. But it's I'm weird so to realize we've never physically met. Yeah. No, I can't wait, man. It's a couple of weeks now. We'll be uh, finally get to shake hands and share a beer. I'll tell uh, I'll tell you this much uh, to to the person that called. It was Matt, right? Yep. Far and away, bar none. It's uh, it's EVP, the ghost trick, where I make a ghost appear on on people's phone. I do not do a damn thing during that show except for flap my gums and tell a ghost story <laughs> and laugh my ass off when everyone shits their pants. It is it is the most fun I've had in all of Magic. That was a really good trick. Oh, I'm glad you dig it, man. All right, well, hey, we're, we're going to drop this call off. Take care, buddy. And uh, yeah. uh, I'm actually going to unplug the phone. We're going to take a short break, and I'm going to set up a magic fail vid. We've got Jeff for about 20 more minutes. Does that sound about right to you? That's about right, yeah. All right, hold on. We'll do uh, – this is uh, this is not technically a magic fail video, but this will be what uh, I want you to watch while I go grab, <laughs> grab a drink. Um, this is in every way what I am convinced Scam School will look like in 15 years. I don't know if you've seen this. Have you, have you seen this, Jeff? Uh, is this the thing you Twittered? Yeah. Yeah. This I is awesome. <laughs> As a professional magician for the past 16 years, I've seen firsthand the powerful effect <laughs> so that magic can have on the opposite sex. Oh, my God. So what else can you make disappear? <laughs> oh, the timing's a bit off on this. Damn it. Well, I'm waiting. Oh, you know what? Here, uh, here. Let me let me actually stop it. I'm gonna play it over on this other on this other. That's a good TiVo moment. My, <laughs> Bonnie and I like whenever whenever we have an awesome TiVo. It's like we'll, we'll be in the middle of arguing with each other, and then, and we'll be like, nice TiVo moment, by the way. When when you pause it, right in the middle of one of those things. All right, let me see if I can do this, and we'll see if this is any better here. Aha. Oh, much better. Let's see if the... As a professional magician for the past 16 years, I've seen firsthand the powerful effect that magic can have on the opposite sex. Oh my God. So what else can you make disappear? Well, I'm waiting. What are you looking at? How did you do that? Well, magicians usually don't reveal their secrets. Is there something I could do to make you reveal it? Well, maybe. How about meeting me back here at 11 o'clock for a drink or so? No, no. Uh, how do I know you're not some sort of a weirdo? I'm not a weirdo. Remember while you're performing, oh, that's you stay sick. totally focused on the trick. Totally <laughs> focused. <laughs> That's great. I mean, how could you get it into my palm? It's magic. There can be no hesitation, no fumbling. If she even suspects that I would have gone the other way or I had some other outs in mind, the trick is ruined and you have no magic. And you like magic. Remember to read your flirting with magic book. It's hot. She never felt a thing. Did you ever feel a thing? No. Not a thing. 
That's why magicians never get second dates. You'll find when you have a little magic, the flirting comes easy. The greatest thing I can teach you is to go out and have fun. Just do it. Be yourself and use the exciting magic you learned in this course. If you're looking to turn your social life around, no matter who you are, all you need is a little magic. Best way to play, one at a time. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, this is this is completely awesome. Just for the middle of it. Uh, the person who actually sent me that video, Jessica Sarai, actually is actually watching the show right now. And yes, I am the biggest fan of this video in the world. My favorite part is uh, is this guy right, right How do you here. Do that? Magicians usually don't reveal their secrets. I'm not a weirdo. Like you reveal it? <laughs> no, yeah, that's all you can say. Back here at 11 o'clock for a drink or so. No, no. Uh, how do I know you're not some sort of a weirdo? I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> it's like he could not look any more weird <laughs> if it was written in the script. <laughs> it is out. Uh, I'm not a weirdo. I'm, I'm oh. Not, I'm not a weirdo. Oh, oh, well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let me see if I can actually dig up this video. Uh, I actually just ran... Oh, here we go. How many scams or tricks has Jeff pulled off or demonstrated for people? Because I know, I know you watch Scam School, which is very flattering yes. to me. But uh, tell me, have you actually pulled any of these off? Have you tried them? I, um, I, the last time I went up and visited my family was for my little nephew's fourth birthday. And I did uh, several of them up there for my family. Um, the uh, toothpick uh, equation. Yeah, was that's big a good one. Best. That's a good one. I love that stuff. Uh, my dad used to do s little stuff like that for me when I was a kid, um, little mind puzzles and stuff like that. So I love the the puzzle stuff to to, to do on people. I honestly, I know, I know you're gonna say it's it's easy, but I honestly have no confidence that I'll be able to pull off some of the stuff that you you guys do. I, I know that it looks easy when you guys what? do that at the, at the bar, but man, I, I just feel like I would screw it up. Well, that's why you got it helps it helps to have kind of a buddy, kind of a partner to get uh, yeah. to get stuff started with because you're right, it is hard I, to kind of bust it straight up out of nowhere. I want to do the I want to do the uh the psychic thing with the uh uh-huh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the that. uh the, the the currency connection we called it. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Uh, I love that. I I, I really want to do it. I I learned one when I was a kid um, that was like that where you laid all the cards out in a in a grid and then where you point you said is this the card and you pointed where the position on the grid uh, was for the actual card right so that you're new yeah and, and actually we use the same technique for um, I think we called it code drink where, where somebody sets their drink on on a coaster on the different place yes, to indicate to that where it is yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know what's interesting is I want I keep wondering and I'm convinced, and, and I, I, maybe this is just the format of Scam School that makes me paranoid this way, or maybe it's a universal thing about having a product, but I am continuously convinced that any moment now, I'm going to be found out. And then once I'm found out, it's all, it's, it's, it's all over. Uh, and so I'm, I'm terribly afraid. It's like, okay, well, that's it. That's my last good idea. From here on out, it's all downhill. I got nothing. I mean, do you, do you deal with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I we worry all the time about the show and the quality of the show and keeping the quality of the show up and you know is it is it should we throw everything out the window and start on something new or you know it's always it's always a uh, but I think that's good you know I think um, Woody Allen called that the uh, divine dissatisfaction where you're just constantly unhappy with what you're making and it just keeps driving you to make something better you know? Well, and, and I, uh, from sitting over where I am, I'm convinced that at any minute now, I'm, I'm going to be out of ideas and it's all over. But, you know, peeking over at you guys, it occurs to me that you guys could always, I mean, there's always more movies coming out and there's always more crap to talk about. Well, I have to admit, I watch your show and I go, I, I hope he never runs out of ideas <laughs> because <laughs> I think about that too. I'm like, what if he runs out of tricks to teach me? <laughs> well, and, and uh, th there are certain, I, I tell you, a big thing that kind of has relaxed me about that is uh, is doing the episodes where I'm not the only expert in there. You know, I, I hope you enjoyed the, the the strength school stuff we did with Dennis Rogers, yeah, a phenomenal that was awesome. strong man. The success of those episodes completely opens up the ability to, you know, now we can go talk to a psychologist and learn how to lie effectively. Or we actually have some episodes uh, where, we're, where, where we talk to an escape artist and learn, you know, some of that stuff. So, you know, cool. I think that would be... That, uh, how how happy must you be that uh, 
Richard Gary had performed your trick in space. Dude, you That's have, amazing. You have no... I mean, w were you a fan of Ultima when you were a kid? Ultima 7 is my favorite game of all time. I mean, uh, I was about... As, when I was in third grade, Ultima 3 Exodus came out with the little stick figure men and all that stuff. And, and I would watch it. Every time I loaded it up on the Apple IIe, I would watch the little animation of the four guys oh. taking on the dragon and then the dragon blasting them. <clears throat> and then, the, you know, in Ultima 4, the whole, the whole selection of uh, the, the cards to pick your avatar. Oh, I was crazy about it. Uh, it was big enough a deal for me at all to get to know Richard Garriott. Uh, I, I don't think I ever told you. First time I ever met him was when I was in college, and pretty much the only trick I had in my bag of tricks was I could eat fire. But it just so happened that Richard Garrett was one, doing one of his big uh, in-costume feasts, and he was you know, there as Lord British, and they <laughs> wanted a fire eater. And uh, they're like, well, and I'm like, well, I don't know. What do I do? It's like, well, just get up there and eat fire. I'm like, well, I don't have really a routine. They're like, I don't know. Talk about the history of fire eating or something. I was like, well, I don't have any Renaissance clothes. They're like, I know. Here, wear this loincloth, and you could be like a wild man of Borneo type thing. And, so, awesome. and, so, and, and I, got, I think I got paid 80 bucks. And I'm like, meanwhile, in, in, in college, I'm thinking, 80 bucks for 15 minutes? Hells yeah, that'd be awesome. And plus, it's <laughs> like, oh, man, I'm getting to drive to Richard Garriott's house. And it's, it was amazing and everything you would imagine. Uh -huh. But in my mind, and, uh, and I'm so glad that you are as deep a geek fanboy as I am so you can understand what this is like because I describe it to people uh -huh. and they don't get it. But in my and mind, he actually has a castle, right? Oh, he yeah, lives totally. in a castle. And he's building a bigger, more badass one, which uh, I, I don't know what he's building it out of after he spent all his money going to space. I mean, out of popsicle sticks, <laughs> as far as I know. <laughs> but I'm walking up in the court of Lord British, and he's looking me right in the eye because he's excited. To, oh, this is the fire eater. And, and he's got this kind of smile. He's got the crown on his head. And in my mind, I am a little stick figure man. <laughs> and I'm walking up to, to actually meet J Lord British. It was uh, effing awesome. So cool. Uh, and right. then on top of that, like, there's got to be... How many people on Earth have had a trick of theirs performed in space? Not many, you know? dude. And that, and that weirds me out. I mean, I am <laughs> so geeking out. I'll geek out about it forever. I'm trying, I'm trying yeah. to be civil about it because there comes a time when, when geeking out about something you're involved in starts to starts to feel like bragging or whatever and it's like it's kind of at that point so I'm trying not to geek but in in my heart I am still like that was on the space station the freaking yeah. trick was on the space station a trick of yours was performed not on earth <laughs> you know it's that's amazing it, it it was it was very exciting but uh, not as exciting as the adventure that uh, that this fellow had uh, right here this is the ap uh, epic fail vid I wanted you to uh to enjoy here. Let me get this going. Thank you. Here we go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the most dangerous trick known to man. Uh -oh. The infamous spikes of death. With little fanfare, Arenda was led by his assistant to the spikes of death. Arenda had accurately represented the trick. It was truly a dangerous bit of sorcery, meant to be attempted by master magicians only. Arendo's task was to free himself from the straitjacket before a candle flame burned through a rope which was holding the spikes of death. The spikes consisted of six lethal steel daggers embedded in an 80-pound iron drum. He had approximately 15 seconds in which to escape before the daggers smashed into his skull. caused by a faulty wooden safety lever. This 39 cent piece of equipment broke as he tried to engage it with his foot. Like all daredevils in search of recognition, Arendo had finally found a trick which gave him the notoriety he craved, though not exactly in the way he planned it. Oh, that's is that real? Uh, see, that's th that, that response that you're having is the response I had when I watched it 20 years ago when it was Faces of Death 4. Oh. But that is not the reaction I have now as a uh, as a jaded <laughs> grown up. Dude, 
we we actually met, we uh, we went to a um, event the Toy Retro guys and I and we met this guy who said he directed a couple of the Faces of Death movies segment and he said they're all movie? fake. What? Well, uh, here, take a look at take a take a look at this. Hold on, I'm gonna try to pause it right at the moment. Oh wait. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if you're able to see it. Let me. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. You go from that. Oh uh, yeah. To. Uh. Yeah, that's that's definitely not a fake head. There you go. <laughs> it's not even. It's not even a flesh color, right? But there were yeah. so many moments that I was so wrapped up in, and I was having my brains explode over. Uh, when you were a kid, the faces of death. It was like. There was no doubt that they were real. Oh, real? Yeah, yeah, because they, they were banned. And, and you know, it makes me wonder if it was even banned. You know, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't be that be a coup if they manufactured all that crap? Dude, that's amazing marketing. <laughs> well, it, it, it I kind of go through different. Oh man, we locked up. Look at that. And if all goes well, hold on. Let me actually stop the stream for a second. Sit tight, guys. We'll be right back.